Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some breaking news. First up, Morgan Stanley becomes the very first big U.S. bank to offer its wealthy clients access to Bitcoin funds. And the key word here is wealthy. Why they do it, what's going on? I'll tell you all about it in a second. On top of that, we're going to take a look at uh, the new Grayscale Trusts. And there are five new cryptocurrency digital assets to uh, take a look at. So maybe this might be something to do your own research and see exactly what these products are all about. Maybe add them to your portfolio if you deem fit. Also, take a look at the Blockchain African Conference, which is going to be happening uh, tomorrow. Keynote speaker is Charles Hoskinson and a lot of big name players. And finally, I minted the tomato coin and I am the proud owner of 2 million tomato coins, which I did on the Cardano blockchain. So we'll go over all that, why I did it. But first, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So today it is the 17th. 17th. It is almost 10 a.m. Uh, El Paso, Texas time. Got to get this done so I can go get my uh, vaccine. Great for me. And uh, what's going on here? Well, uh, total market cap has been slipping a little bit. Now we're down. Well, not really. We're at 1.7 trillion. Remember just a year ago when we, we broke through 200 billion, 300 billion people were like, wow, 300 billion. We're on our way back. And now we're, you know, poo-pooing all over like ah, 1.7 trillion. One's two. One's three. So of course, it's always the same thing, you know, uh, bigger, stronger, faster. Let's get it here as quick as possible because we want everything yesterday. But that's uh, pretty much not how it works. Anyhow, let's see the actual prices of what's going on. Let me blow this up so you can see what I'm talking about. And here we are. So uh, looking at the charts, which uh, it's always interesting to see what's going on as far as price action goes. We've got Bitcoin down to, you know, 54 yeah, 54,000, below 55. And it just keeps going down a little bit. There was uh, some news, whether you believe it to be true or not, that India is consider considering banning uh, cryptocurrency again. And we covered that. Um, the finance minister had come out and she said that uh, they do not plan to do that. That's not going to happen. They're going to sit down with the um, uh, Reserve Bank uh, of India, the RBI, and uh, go through the talks. But they want to make this happen, not just blockchain, but she says specifically cryptocurrencies. So uh, I don't see this really happening. And again, uh, the Reserve Bank of India, you have to remember, they don't set law. That is not how it works. And just remember that about a year ago, uh, the um, uh, Supreme Court of India said, hey, uh, you can't ban this. It's, it's really against our laws and you have to open this up to people. So even though the Reserve Bank say, we want to ban it, that's okay. I want a uh, 24 karat gold toilet and I'm not going to get it. So that's just how it really works out in, in the world. And they can talk about it all day long, but uh, I don't believe it's going to be banned. But of course, we will see. Anyhow, uh, Ethereum uh, down below 1800, 1770. Uh, looks like there's some, there's some trepidation in the waters. Uh, look for April 1st. There's going to be what is called, quote unquote, a show of power uh, by the Ethereum miners as they're going to I guess, protest the uh, EIP-1559, which is going to uh, flatten out the rates for uh, the, the Ethereum fees. They don't really like that too much. They say it puts a greater risk for uh, for Ethereum and the network. And of course, Ethereum has, the foundation has responded by going, you know what, we should just really speed up that proof of stake work. <laughs> so we'll see how that works out. Uh, Cardano's in the third spot because it was listed yesterday on uh, Coinbase Pro. And just so you know, with Coinbase Pro, it always starts out like that. It's going to be listed on Coinbase. It's outside the pro. They get the liquidity. Yeah, you can't buy it right now. It's all inbound transfers only. And then it goes live, I believe, tomorrow. And then from there, it'll it'll migrate over to, uh, to Coinbase. So um, really, in all honesty, uh, it's down a percentage point last, 20, last hour. It only went up about 20%. And, uh, you know, there used to be this thing called the Coinbase effect. But uh, look, Coinbase doesn't have the power it used to. In 2017... Uh, if there was something listed, it would shoot up massively. So, you know, Cardano used to be a buck fifty, and so people talk about, well, the market cap's really high, whatever else. Look, it used to be like a buck, not a buck, like a buck forty-eight or something like that, dollar forty-eight, and uh, it only went up, you know, a little bit. So, I don't think Coinbase has the power it does now. If it was listed on PayPal, you better believe that it would have been big. Anyhow, Binance Coin, everything's down a little bit. Nothing really fantastic in the news today. Anything up that's really majorly, majorly? Let's see. 39% for Filecoin, I'll tell you, because Grayscale listed it in one of their trusts. Basic attention token, probably up. All the rest of the one probably up because of that listing. So now you know why. Anyhow, that's what's going on. Let's take a look at the projected range, get into our uh, inner trader and see what's potentially going up. 
no surprise here. Basic attention token is going up massively because of that listing with Grayscale. Go chain StormX. Hey, StormX. I recently added that to my portfolio just a little bit uh, because it's uh, it looks it's been around since 2014. They just they're kind of like honey, where the more that you buy in retail, the more cash back or crypto back that you get. And they just added Adidas, and that's a pretty big thing. So uh, StormX, yeah. Next gas Filecoin again listed by Grayscale. Oh, so that's what's going on. Of course, Trader Chain tells us. So let's just break into today's top story, shall we? All right. So first up. Um, I saw, I found this on Twitter because uh, Mike Novogratz tweeted it out. That guy must be on Twitter like 24-7 or he's got a hell of an assistant because that guy tweets like all day long. And he's just said, hey, he was proud to be a part of this. So what's going on here? Well, Morgan Stanley becomes the first big U.S. bank to offer its wealthy clients access to Bitcoin funds. Nothing against wealthy people. Good for you guys. But uh, just how it is. And I think it's mostly to mitigate risk. Because you got to remember, an accredited investor... In the eyes of the of the government and laws, uh, should know more of the risks, and it's just a it's it's less of a risk for these banks and institutions because they if they go for uh, these these um, uh, people who have a pretty good net worth, then uh, there's uh, less of a risk of a, of a blowback, and uh, I understand why they're doing it. it. Makes a lot of sense. Anyhow, the investment bank told its financial advisors Wednesday in an internal memo that the bank is launching access to three funds that. Enable ownership of Bitcoin. I think that's a, that's a big keyword here. Enable ownership of Bitcoin. I'm not 100% sure if this is actual physical. Oh, there's no physical Bitcoin. That's, that's goofy. Uh, like paper Bitcoin, like, like an ETF. It's not an ETF, uh, but they're able to get it into a fund. So really, uh, the question then becomes, well, who is doing uh, the custody? I would have guessed then uh, Morgan Stanley has some kind of custody service or they're reaching out to Galaxy Digital. Uh, and that's that's the same type of thing. Two of the funds on offer are from Galaxy Digital, the crypto firm founded by Mike Novogratz. Third is a joint from NYDIG, another big player in the space and becoming bigger every day, it seems like. The bank is only allowing its wealthier clients access to the volatile asset. The bank considers it suitable for people with an aggressive risk tolerance. Sure, but we've talked about this before, right? I don't understand why, not, not just the banks, but like financial institutions or hedge funds or, or, or financial advisors, which I definitely am not. Look at this shirt, not a financial advisor. And uh, why wouldn't they just tell their people like, hey, all you gotta do is just to put in, you know, two to 3% into your portfolio as a hedge. That's all you gotta do. And uh, it, it might go to zero, I mean, which is the standard response, which is stupid, I think. But if they just say that, then people be like, yeah, okay, you know, I have a little bit of risk. I think 2% or 1% will be okay. I don't understand. But this is what uh, they are doing here in this situation. So, yeah, let's we'll see how it works out. Anyhow, uh, the bank considers, considers who is, uh, you know, who is uh, uh, wealthy to have at least 2 million, asset, 2 million in assets held by the firm. Investment firms need at least 5 million at the bank to qualify for the new stake. So, if you have a lot, that, that a bunch of money, then sure, let, let them do it. And the question then becomes like, well, why do you have to have all that money when you can just go to Coinbase and you can just go to Voyager and just get it yourself? You understand, um, people are different, right? And uh, some people like, you know, Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank, he does not feel comfortable doing that. He's like, I feel comfortable with ETFs. That's just what I know. And I don't want to learn anything uh, different. I don't want to, you know, uh, stored in a cold storage. I don't want to have 5 million on my nano ledger. Okay, that's fine. Same thing here, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has their own risk tolerance. Everybody wants to do it a certain way. And some people will say, yeah, but you gotta, you've got to own it because if it's not your keys, not your crypto, calm down. Everybody's got things going on in their lives, right? I mean, if you're single mom, five kids running around working two jobs and trying to, trying to invest, good luck. So uh, that's just all I'll say about that. I, 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 I welcome everybody who's in to cryptocurrency less. I don't care how you do it. Just get in here before it's too late. All right. And to finish up, uh, the investment bank, a giant in the wealth management, has $4 trillion in client assets. And the rest of it is kind of boring. But uh, that is the big thing, right? So you've got a huge bank, and they're making waves, and they're telling their investors, like, look, if you're if you have this much, two million or five million, or what are the criteria? Put this much into uh, one of our funds for cryptocurrency, and that's they're talking to not just a little bit of people, four trillion assets under management. So now you're going to have people who are going to hear about this story because CNBC is going to cover this all day long, and then all of a sudden people are like, "What's that? What's going on? I, I should get into that because if the wealthy people are doing it, that's smart money. 
I need to get in there. Before you know it, tidal wave, FOMO, hockey stick, everything goes up. Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Uh, yeah, this one. So before I get going, who likes this shirt? Look at this shirt. Look at this. Let me show you something. See this? Average shirt, right? Not a big deal. It's okay. Get yourself one of these. These are called classic tees, and uh, I love them. So, so far I was reached out by the CEO and owner and he goes, hey, can I do a, a promo spot on your channel? I said, no, I don't really do promo spots. And uh, that's just it. He goes, well, can you talk about it? Sure. And then uh, I'll give you an affiliate link and then you can uh, see if people like them. So they are, if you use the affiliate link of Dan15, it gives you a 15% off. And the reason why I partnered with them, or I am talking about this right now, First of all, it's super comfortable. I don't like t-shirts that are really loose and everything else because I'm not a big guy. I'm just really not. But if I have something like this, a little bit more fitted in the arms, but then has what I like to consider a dad bod, a little bit of more <laughs> room in the stomach, I will take that all day long. And because my channel is 93% males, <laughs> kind of a sausage party. So like with, with this situation, I think this would be appropriate if you like these types of shirt. And the last reason why I, I partner up with them is this, is that Part of the proceeds goes to help uh, homeless vets get shelter in Georgia. So look, if you're into, I always am trying to find like a t-shirt that fits me instead of like those regular t-shirts, that's what everything fits me. Cause again, not a big guy, but if it's tapered, it feels good. It's soft. It's a premium uh, t-shirt. I love it. And I just got this yesterday. So I thought I'd tell you all about it. To grab one of these shirts, all you got to do is go to trueclassictees.com. The link is like the third link in the description below. And just put in, I'll show you right here when you're checking out, Dan15. And apply that and you get 15%. You don't have to uh, use Dan15. You just go to True Classic Tees and check it out. But uh, hey, if you want to use the discount, there you go. Anyhow, that is that little snippet part. Let's move on to our next piece, which you're all here for.